All right, so I've got my battery tender out. We're gonna try and start this thing. So we'll see what happens. I might have to switch it to the next mode up. That's promising. We give it a couple, couple minutes to charge up on that mode and uh, see what we can go with here. But we need to choke it to get it to run like that. Now this thing does have gas in it. The guy that gave me this lawnmower said that he had put gas in it, tried to start it, and uh, couldn't get it to start. And it seems like that's because of a bad battery. Now one thing I do want to mention is these tanks are absolute trash. And one of you guys suggested, well, I should just put this tank into that mower if this one, if this mower isn't worth fixing. Well, there's a problem with that. You see all the cracking on it? That's a defect from John Deere. And it hasn't started doing it yet, but it's got two seams, and that's another defect. It'll, it'll leak out of the seams. That's what that one was doing. So the new replacement that you can get is about a hundred bucks and it's just one piece it's not two seams put together it's not two halves glued together or pressed together or however they do it um, it's just a uh, single unit and unfortunately unless you retrofit something else on the back of it like that one there's really really no easier way to do it so, kind of is what it is, but let's see if she'll give us a start. Nope, no dice just yet. Might have to pull that air filter cover off and give it some cheater spray. Well, we'll try this first before we do that, see if it'll start on its own. Let's see if it'll restart on its own. Nope. Battery's dead. So it needs a new battery. 
Well, so there is a little bit of promise with this. One, obviously it runs, and it seems to run well enough. But we do have a problem with the gas tank. You guys can kind of see it down here as well. It, uh, I don't think I would sell it on to somebody else, at least with this gas tank. I would probably end up changing that out and upgrading it to the newer style. So the battery is about 25 from Walmart. The gas tank's about 100. So that's a you know 100 and let's say 135, 140 with tax. And then we have the transmission. I'm hoping it's just acting like that because the belt is worn out or not tight enough. But it is possible with the amount of hours on this thing that the transmission itself is tired. This is a hydrostatic transmission. These things do operate off of a certain pressure. So it's possible that the belt isn't, being that it's not at the correct tension, assuming that, um, it's probably not spinning the uh, transmission's pump uh, fast enough to generate enough pressure, at least enough to uh, get it to do what it needs to do. Now, I will say that I believe the transmission's the same as in this one. However, this one has a thousand or so less hours than that one does. So it is very possible that the transmission on this thing is worn out. Now, best case scenario, the transmission and it's fine and the belts just need to be replaced and the deck needs to be serviced. We're probably in between the belts and the deck, probably looking at at least a couple hours to change all that, probably about an hour, hour and a half. Um, I mean, we're probably into this thing right now at about 300 bucks. So we're looking at a tank, a new battery, or a new tank, a new battery, um, new fuel line, new uh, tune-up stuff, uh, air filter, oil, and all that, uh, which is probably going to be about 60 to 80. So with the battery and gas tank, let's say 200 right there. The belts are probably going to come in at around 30, 40, maybe 50 bucks. So, <sighs> kind of approaching the $300 mark. And that's assuming that this transmission is good. If the transmission's bad, I already know what it's going to cost to replace it. You buy one of those trannies brand new, they're about anywhere from seven, eight hundred bucks, some, sometimes more than that. Um, you can get a rebuild a rebuild kit for them that cuts the uh, the cost in half, but obviously you do have to pull that transmission off, the transaxle off, and uh, tear it apart and hopefully rebuild it. Um, the last I looked into that, those parts, the rebuild kit parts, are about three hundred bucks, three hundred and fifty bucks, depending on where you get them. Uh, you can find used transmission for the, transmissions for these, but it's kind of hit and miss, hit or miss. Um, they're not always available, and when they are, they tend to sell fairly quickly on eBay. So I'll probably have a gander on eBay and see if I can find a good used one with you know a low amount of hours on it. Um, and if I can get one of the a used one for less amount of money than a rebuild kit, I'll definitely probably go that route. But as far as the engine's concerned, you know, the engine's fine. Often on these new lawn tractors, the engines will outlast everything else. The transaxle, the gas tank, all the other crap that's attached to it, the frame. Uh, the motors, the engines will outlast pretty much everything else. So I'm not really all that worried about this motor. Uh, I have had one of these before. It was on a Craftsman LT4000 or LT3000. I can't remember which. And uh, they're decent little engines. I didn't have any issues with mine. Um, once I got all the kinks worked out of it because it had been sitting so long, um, it just it wasn't an issue after that. But the positives here is this thing runs and drives. The deck turns on even with a worn belt. I'm not hearing too much growling come out of the spindles, so it seems to be okay. Uh, I've seen a couple of these on my local Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and offer up anywhere from 800 to about 1200 bucks. And many of those, believe it or not, didn't have the deck on it, so it was just the tractor. 
So assuming that I can get this thing working and you know, usable well enough for somebody else, I think best case I'd be able to make about 400 bucks off of this thing. Uh, this is really kind of the issue that I come across with a lot of these lawn tractors is unfortunately a lot of the time they're, uh, they just need too much and it's often one part, the transmission, that will completely down a lawn tractor unless you have another one for cheap or you have one on hand from another one. Um, it'll completely down a lawn tractor from being able to be sold, at least as far as being smart about it goes. I haven't even checked the fan on the transaxle. I don't think that really matters just yet. I think the big thing is to uh, replace that drive belt, see if that makes a difference. I think I have an extra one from this one that I haven't put on this one yet. So I think I'll uh, give that a shot and see where we can go from there. But the wheels are in good shape. Or excuse me, the tires are in good shape. I don't think this thing has been uh, updated with the new bearing uh, set up just yet like I did on mine. Uh, it's possible that it has been because the steering actually seems to be pretty good. I mean, the steering wheel, the steering box, there is a little bit of play, but that's not horrible. In fact, that's actually pretty good, but the wheels on that one, when that one was all worn out, they were flopping around and moving around and making all sorts of noise, but these actually seem to be pretty tight. So it's possible that that update was already done. But, uh... I'll keep you guys updated on this thing. I don't really know what it's gonna need. I have to tear into it more than just what I've done in this video, but at least I know that going to that next step is gonna be worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. You all stay classy.